Hi guys, it's Dodge from Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio. Today we're painting the Hellbroom. And I've started with a nice black primer, as always, the Leo primer. And we're going to do all the armor in a light grey green by Model Air. Using my airbrush, set to about 25-30 psi. To give a nice even coverage. Then we're going to go into a Cayman green to go into the shadows. Then after that, we're going to use a Cayman green mix with Panzer Dark Grey mix those both together and do an extra shade after that to darken it down even more. As you can see you start to get a nice colour transition but it's still a bit flat so we're going to go ahead and use a duck egg model air over the top and just in the hot spots you know anywhere where the light had hit the most and where you want the eyes to be drawn to the most prominent features of the model. Then we've gone ahead and I've, we've mixed up a Agrax Earth Shade and Thonium Camo Shade by GW5050 and we're going to give this whole thing a coat. All the armour just coat the whole lot, anything that's green, so it's got a stain filter and a tone to it. Because obviously the duck eggs made it look a bit cloudy, we want to bring those colours back, make them look a bit more vibrant and fill in those shades while we're at it. Now we're doing something a bit different, as opposed to using the chipping fluid that we usually use, we're going to use Games Workshop's Dryad Bark and a bit of old sponge, and we're going to go ahead and stipple all the chipping effects on this time. And we're going to take a Winsor Newton Series 7 uh, brush, and then we're going to use the duck egg again, thin down a lot, and we're going to highlight all those chips. This can take quite a lot of time, but it's worth doing if you want a really good effect. I then gave it a gloss varnish to protect all the work that I've already done. And gone ahead using AK Active, AK Interactive Streaking Grime. Just putting this on where rust would run, and then once this is dry, I'm going to use AK Interactive um, Terps, sorry, and pull those colours down so they look like streaks as you can see here. Once that's done you then hit it with a matte varnish that will keep those sealed and protected and now we have lots of rust streaks running down all this armour. It starts to look pretty nerdly after a while. You can layer this up as many times as you want, you've got quite a variety of different streaks and grounds and effects you can add to this. Um, we'll probably do another tutorial on just those products alone at some point. But if you do a Nurgle Army, I suggest picking them up. We've then gloss varnished everything again to protect it. And this is Maskol. I can't remember what company makes this. I think it's hum Humbro, isn't it? Hum Humbro. Um, masking fluid. And we're going to protect even more what we've already done on the armour. It's basically a silicone substance, so do not use a good brush on this because you will end up throwing it away. This is just a cheap brush that I found in a studio that's not being used for anything. And basically it's a silicone layer that's going to protect and you can peel it off when you're done. And then we're going to go to flat brown by model colour and paint the whole thing and because it's all masked you don't have to worry about overspray or hitting any of those details that you've done. You want to give it a nice coat on all the fleshy bits. You can see uh, the paint was a little bit runny, so I had to give it a couple of coats. Once that's done, we use Game Colors Terra Earth to start highlighting the fleshy parts. All the way around the back. Um, basically, again, I'm just using a 45 degree angle. Anywhere where the light hit the most is going to be the most pronounced when it comes to color. 
so just stick to those areas there's no not much point really trying to hit the underneath areas under the legs because it's covered by his body weight and his body mass so the light's not going to get there as much so if you're going to highlight those just do it subtly and don't go overboard And because the um, browns dry a lot, um, yeah. this type of browns, when it dried, it wasn't quite as vibrant as I'd like. So I mixed up Terra Earth and Sand Yellow, and Sand Yellow by Model Air, and went over to do a second highlight, which creates a pretty nice transition. You can see I'm putting on that second layer and all those bumps and odd bits that bulge up and down from the nerdly flesh there will get highlighted again. I love using the airbrush on big fleshy models like this, it adds so much depth and colour contrast. Of course there's no contrast on it yet because as I said before using an airbrush makes things very tasty. That's basically what we're up to. After that all I did was add an Agrax Earthshade wash all over those fleshy parts. Don't let it pull up too much and um, once that's dry I went ahead and used a flesh wash. This is by, it's a Vallejo wash, I can't remember the exact brand. I'm using that just to shade in areas where there would be sores and pus and wounds like the spine for instance that looks like it's going to be really sore so we're going to build up some colour in there offset the colour from the rest make it really stand out which I think is a really cool feature and a really nice bit of design and then we're mixing up Drushi Violet and some Lamia Medium both by Games Workshop and giving that whole area a wash the mediums to make sure it's thinned just right if you use water you can get this cloudy effect with your washers and you don't want the dry sort of cloudy effect on something that's supposed to be organic and living you want it to look as despite the fact it's not natural you want it to look as natural as possible so we're going to build those layers up a little bit at a time like i did in the um, plague drone video then after that I went and did the face and the other wounds with just a water, like just a juicy violet. So we're not watered down with laminate medium. I went and did the face as well. And the wounds where the cables are at the back, starting at the furthest distance away and then pulling all the pigment and all the wash to where you want it to be, where you want it to end up. I went ahead and made a big mistake here using Vallejo's liquid silver. Um, turned out that this was far too vibrant for what I wanted and I thought just a wash or two would tone it down. So at this step I recommend using a darker silver by Vallejo like gunmetal or something because it took a long long time to uh, tone this back down. I went ahead and did a null oil wash on it and then I did a seraphin sepia wash on it and you can't really see on camera but it came up, you know, far too shiny, even through the sepia wash. So I spent quite a lot of time um, trying to tone that down. Sorry about my hand being in the camera. Um, this was not the greatest camera angle. It was also the first video that we shot. I painted all the cables with a um, dark flesh tone by game colour then went ahead and started doing the horns with the Zandri Dust by Games Workshop
It's coming along pretty nicely. I was still not 100% happy with that armor though. The uh, trims on the armor were still far too vibrant. Um, I went ahead and used a Shabti bone, but instead of going from the dark to the light on the horns, I decided to go the opposite way because it's some form of demon creature. And I thought, let's just do it the other way around, see how it looks. And I've gone and put Shabti bone from the base of the horns. So it gets darker towards the top. So now, yeah, the highlights at the bottom, just to do something a bit different and in reverse. Also using Zandri, Zandri dust on the spine, obviously it's a good base coat for that. It's supposed to look like bone, it's a good bone colour to start off with as any basis. You want to be very careful while painting this not to get onto any of the washers or details you've put in to make it look so. And then I've gone and again put another wash onto the armour because I'm still not happy with the trim on it. This was an Agrax Earth Shade. It's really trying to take that silver down because it's far too shiny. And then to highlight the cables I used a Fire Red by Model Air. They didn't need to look too vibrant, there's a lot going on on this model. I also painted the eyes in Baylor Brown then gave those a wash with Agrax to the shade, but that's not on camera. I didn't think you really need to see that one little bit of footage. We did a Seraphim Sepia wash on the bones. We didn't want to jump straight to making them too dark. You take your time on your models and do things in little steps, you'll get a much better result by the end of it, rather than picking a colour, throwing it on and hoping for the best. To paint the face we used a Warp Fiend Grey by Games Workshop and since he's already had a wash we're basically just highlighting the raised parts of his face. As you can see on those horns they've also had a Seraphim Sepia wash but the wash has been pulled from the middle to the top, toning them a little bit. I probably would do some more on that at some point. Then we're do doing an Ethonian camo shade wash all over the face, mixed with Lamiette medium, because we don't want it to be too vibrant. But I also wanted the head to blend with everything else. Then we've gone over a head, the head again with a warp fiend grey, and repicked out those highlights. Now the head's got several different colour transitions on it and several layers of highlights, and starts to look really, really good starts to look like part of the machine rather than just the head being a separate part. And that's all we've really got time for this, uh, for this video, we couldn't fit it all in. If you like the video then uh, leave a comment, uh, if you like, want to see more of our videos then hit subscribe, you can check out our channel on Facebook and that's all for this week's uh, video, I'll see you all next week.